want to be mindful of our time. We also want to know, want you folks to know what we have planned. Um, and that includes um, creating a schedule. <clears throat> so um, we're going to take a little bit of time um, just to define what the problem is and um, uh, give you some give you some context. Uh, you're going to kind of listen to me for a, a few bits. Um, and we'll go for, um, we'll then have Aaron and Cindy and um, Allison kind of work through the overall kind of arching idea that we wrote this grant for. Um, and then we'll start to really kind of look at our co-design together. What does this look like? How do we, how do we evolve this network and these opportunities for our students? Um, and then we'll break for lunch and then we'll come back for lunch and, and start to really kind of hopefully get into some of the nitty gritty about um, the, uh, our network, our organization, how we, how we want to kind of think about the future plans. So um, any questions at the moment before I jump in and, and chatter at you? Okay, fabulous. So 81%, this is a big number. So back in um, 2017, I uh, did an internal study with some graduate students and basically um, we wanted to know how many uh, undergraduates wanted to do research but weren't doing research. And really that 81% represents the students that um, want to be involved in undergraduate research but are not, right? This challenge is multifaceted. And the idea really, when it comes down to it, is that they weren't aware of the um, research opportunities that were available to them. And that was around 39% of the students that were surveyed. And, or they stated barriers that suggested a narrow idea of what research was. And they basically thought they didn't have time for research, that they thought that they, um, and, be, and mainly because they had other responsibilities, caregiver responsibilities, um, financial responsibilities, um, lack of flexible schedules. You know, a lot of people think of research as a nine to five gig and, and that there's not flexibility in that. But um, I think many of us know that that's not necessarily the case. The other thing is, is that they, students didn't feel prepared or supported. And frankly, they were uncertain if research was right for them. These are several of the barriers that um, we hope to overcome, right? And how can we increase the ability for students um, to do research with us, right? And the testament just to this meeting is that we want to break down these barriers, right? Everybody here is that we want to help increase students interested in biology to succeed. And a lot of that means coming to do um, undergraduate research and uh, giving them a chance to explore that and provide to their community. So this image is, is of a student who is collecting and analyzing um, wastewater for COVID-19. So giving a chance for students to get out in the field and help and be um, with monitoring systems that help them understand what's going on in their community. Um, giving them a chance to give back to their community and allow them to have an opportunity to see themselves doing work here in Alaska. And that there's a lot more research opportunities outside of academia um, here in Alaska. And even though here's a, one of my former students that we have lab-based work, that we know that research happens in all spaces. Um, and the goal really is that we allow these expanding opportunities to increase student graduation rates, to increase their persistence to degree attainment, to increase their confidence of thinking that science is for them and that they are not thinking that it's for somebody who has had a very traditional trajectory, that it really can be for anyone that's interested and has um, goals to help and provide um, information for their feed, for their communities. So with that, I'm going to jump over and to the next slide and um, go forward.
Yeah, thank you, Rachel. Um, so I'll be talking about some of the short-term goals for AK Unite along with Cindy. So in our incubator year, we are focused on recruiting participants who are very enthusiastic about expanding access to place-based research experiences for undergraduate students in Alaska. So network participants in our incubator phase are going to be community researchers like yourselves, ed educators, and students. We wanna be really inclusive and welcome everyone. We recognize there are longstanding issues that they stem today, um, and those are related to equity, di diversity, and inclusion. And so as a new network, we wanna commit ourselves to addressing these issues. Thank you guys for, for being here today. It's really exciting to see uh, familiar faces and uh, you know, get to know some new folks as well. Uh, so we're really excited that you're here today, uh, contributing your time to learn more about this very, very new network. Um, we hope that you bring your ideas and your questions to the table and the active discussions that we have later on in the day. And we would like to know, importantly, who isn't here and part of this conversation today. Um, so be mindful as, of that as you're working through the sessions today. And please help us to spread the word about this new network. And with your help, we look forward to building a new inclusive network of participants. Uh, next slide, Rachel. So Alaska offers many exciting field and based uh, lab based research experiences, as we all know, um, and AK Unite is funding this year a small number of research based internships through through the grant for 19 undergraduate students attending either the University of Alaska or Alaska Pacific University. So we have 19 opportunities in total. A $1,500 credit will be deposited to the student's institutional account. And this is approximately equivalent to a three credit course with fees. Additionally, each research mentor will be provided with $500 to help support uh, project supplies. So our priority with the research internships is to match the needs of the student and the community researcher. We intend for these internships to bridge gaps and be alternate pathways to getting research experience without committing to a heavy, um, a heavy load over the summer in particular. We hope that this added flexibility will help us reach our goal in providing meaningful experiences to students who have not yet participated in research. And importantly, we want to seek to increase particip participation of underrepresented groups in biology. Next slide. So in terms of the research, um, we, yeah, I think a lot of us can really think about undergraduate research and how it's impacted our lives. Um, I know speaking for myself, it um, really transformed my under, undergraduate educational experience. And I'm sure many of you can um, agree with that. Uh, we, we recognize that there are equity gaps in terms of access to these opportunities. And that's especially the case for students in very small communities. Um, and I, I was formerly a faculty member at Kenai Peninsula College's Kenai River Campus. And I, I saw firsthand where the science focus was um, for that campus. And it was on training for careers in the allied health sciences, which is great, but it doesn't really capture uh, you know, research in, in all ways. So my, my lab group joined the Alaska Beluga Monitoring Partnership, which was a multi-year citizen science initiative that engages the local community in conservation work for critically endangered Cook Inlet beluga whales. And through this experience, I saw firsthand how partnering with local community researchers can be a solution to providing and enhancing undergraduate research opportunities for our students. So this was a collaboration that supported the paid participation of six undergraduate students in place-based research. And I had students with majors ranging from pre-nursing to process technology. Uh, so these students coordinated with com community members on a weekly basis, and they collected data for habitat use of belugas in the Kenai and Kasilaf rivers. So this is just one example of a type of research internship that could be supported by AK Unite. Next slide. So Cindy, I believe is up next. I just realized I was muted. Okay, so hello everyone. Um, 
Then the other, uh, thank you, Allison. And so another way that we can introduce students to the research experience is by bringing it to them in the college classroom. This is a little bit different than a typical um, internship, but a benefit of this type of research is that it can reduce the barriers for students because the onus is not specifically left on the student to, so it's not totally on their shoulders, because I would imagine as a student who isn't quite certain that it could be a bit scary to reach out to a scientist and ask for an opportunity, or it might also be a little bit um, daunting to fill out an application or time consuming or what have you. Um, and so when, when we bring research into the undergraduate classroom, they're called, they have a specific name, they're called CURES and it stands for the Course-Based Undergraduate Research Experience. Um, this is not a new idea there. Um, it, it, has been, it has been around for quite a few years. In fact, it was, um, there's a CureNet um, sort of that was, that was developed in NSF funded by folks from the University of Georgia, Culturing Harbor and the Cornell Lab of Ornithology. So it's definitely an, an idea that's out there and we, are somewhat interested in, in enhancing some of those opportunities as well. And so to give you an example of a course-based undergraduate research experience, Julie mentioned this when she was introducing herself. She and I started uh, working together back in 2011. And we decided, we, Julie has work in our community for monitoring um, paralytic shellfish poisoning and harmful algal blooms. And I have students in the microbiology lab who needed to, do, needed to have practice doing basically an ELISA test. And so she and I were chatting and we realized that we could actually make a much better connection where the students could do real research. And so we designed a four week program where the students, where the students in the lab actually go out. They go out to the different beaches at super low tides to collect the bivalves. And then the next week they bring them in and they weigh them and they shuck them and they do toxin extraction. And then the following week they run the full ELISA test. And then we even have a follow-up week where we do the data analysis with them, creating graphs and all of those things. And so they've done this small little bit of research, but it's been authentic and it's been place-based and it's here in Kodiak about an issue that, that is of concern in our community. So, just I just want we just wanted to give an example of what can be done. And so as Rachel mentioned at the beginning of the presentation, we see that there's quite a lot of research happening in Alaska. And we really want this network to help more Alaskan students to both engage in that research and be aware of that research. And some network partners um, might find it a little too burdensome or time consuming to commit to an extended period of time in supporting an intern. Um, so there is the possibility that as a network partner that potentially you might have a local research project that might fit really well into an existing undergraduate course. And so by working with a faculty member, you could share that experience and help build a, a particular piece of, a, of the curriculum to give students a research experience and yet, and yet it's still a, a little bit lower key. So. So in other words, you would bring part of your work into the undergraduate classroom and those students would have a more authentic experience because they'd be exposed to research that's happening in their community. Um, so depending on how much time you, as you have as a network partner, um, the faculty member maybe would be able to take that curriculum and run with it such that your, your, your time would be up or like Julie and I, Julie and I work with the, uh, work with the PSP or work, work with the students together every time we, every time we do that. And, and you can always, we want to welcome you to always just lurk as a network participant and jump in when it seems appropriate and jump out when it doesn't. So, and so with that, I will turn it over to Erin. Great. Thank you, Cindy. And thank you, Rachel and Allison for helping to introduce our sort of first incubator year. Um, so in case it isn't clear to folks, this year is sort of this first year pilot year. We have one year of funding from the National Science Foundation. And the idea is to sort of start building momentum and building the network um, and get it launched to be able to apply for more funding. Um, so we are trying to sort of also be thinking ahead long term because we want to make sure that this network is sustainable and that it can grow and evolve to meet both your needs as partners or potential partners and our students needs as well. And so as I alluded to, um, this is a pilot year. NSF has these five-year grants for research coordination networks and undergrad biology education, and that's the program that we were funded under, under our one-year incubator. And this year, what we're currently doing is to basically prepare us to apply for that full five-year grant. 
um, potentially with a larger um, co-principal investigator team and more um, collaborators as well. And so part of what we really want to make sure we accomplish during this pilot year is making sure that we design a network collaboratively with partners, which is you all um, potentially, and our students to make sure that we're really meeting everyone's needs and goals. And today is just like that first step in laying the groundwork and getting input um, from you all about that. And our ultimate goal really is to get more Alaskan students involved in biology, both in terms of retention in the STEM majors that are individual academic institutions, but also to make sure that students are able to get jobs and have successful careers in our state. And we really wanna ensure that students are connected to the research that's happening here in the state and that we're also training students appropriately to join the STEM workforce after graduation. And one way that we hope we can make that happen is through this peer and cohort mentorship among the students that participate in this program as they move through. And our ultimate, sorry, um, we also wanna make sure that we've really set up this network for success, um, even in the absence potentially of grant funding um, after those potential five years are up or any other funding that we might acquire. And folks might have experienced this and have kind of alluded to this in our introductions that we often have these sort of one on one institutional relationships um, that are sort of created by individuals at each institution. And for example, if an employer or faculty member retires, the relationship might wither or disappear altogether. And one of our goals, too, is to establish some new institutional relationships in a sustainable way to really ensure this network's longevity. And part of our plan obviously involves getting more funding to do that. And we also hope that this can be a networking opportunity for all of you as well as you're meeting new researchers across Alaska. And so to also ensure you that we have some method to our madness today, um, this is obviously now, well, maybe sort of obviously if you're reading all the small text here, there's obviously parts of this logic model that we put together for this initial one year grant that are a little outdated because we had some delays due to COVID with getting the grant funding from NSF and our plan schedule. Um, but basically today we're doing this network hub initiation workshop as we called it, or this launch event. Um, and we'll be talking about this afternoon and the afternoon breakout sessions about potential trainings that the network could offer you um, to be successful in mentoring students and working with students. Um, and I also just wanna highlight that we have this website that we've stood up and worked with um, the CERC folks with. So I'll put that link in the chat too, and folks might've already visited and registered via that website, but we are sort of making progress in our incubator goals um, over time. Next slide, please, Rachel. And so with that, I just, I'll pass the mic back over to Rachel um, to sort of see if folks have comments, thoughts, or questions about this initial sort of overview of what we're trying to accomplish with AK Unite. Thanks, 